Alright, the wind must be taken into account during all aspects of firing uh, to include zeroing. You need to know what a no wind zero is for your rifle. Alright, so here, zeroing in windy conditions at 300 meters. Alright, you know the wind is blowing clearly from right to left. Alright, your shots are centered up on target, meaning you have a good solid zero, but you're in a windy condition. What happens when you come out the next day and you shoot at the same range, the same 300 meter range, but the wind isn't blowing as hard as it was? You shoot your group, and the next thing you know, you're out the right because you had compensated for the wind. That's why it's important to get a no wind zero. When you zero that rifle for 300 meters or any distance for that matter, make sure you have a good solid no wind zero on the gun. And then you either hold to compensate for the wind or you dial the sights and then dial them back to your no wind zero. This applies to zeroing at distance and not as much at 25 meters. All right, again, the wind has to be blowing extremely hard to even blow you the smallest amount at 25 meters. So really pay attention to getting a no wind zero at distance at 300 meters. All right, I'm Staff Sergeant Green, and now that we went through all the classroom portions of the basement rifle marksmanship course, we're gonna get out here and do our 25 meter zero. The first thing that we need to do once we draw the weapons out of the arms room, again, is to go through our, our pre-zero checklist. We're gonna make sure that the front sight post is not bent or damaged. We're gonna make sure that the base of the front sight post is level with the, um, the front sight housing itself. We're gonna come back here to our rear sight. Uh, we're gonna check make sure there's no dirt or anything in there that's gonna stop it from moving its full range of motion. We're gonna make sure our small aperture is up. Um, the windage knob is zeroed. As you can see, the, the index lines are lined up, so it's at mechanical zero. And our rear sight Elevation wheel is bottomed out, so there's no gap between the rear sight itself and the rear sight housing. We're going to come to 6-3. For the M16A4 zeroing at 25 meters, you have to come to the Z on the carrying handle. And, uh, and it's ready to zero at 25 meters now. Now that our, our weapon is ready to roll, we're uh, going to look at the target. We make sure we have the M16A2 target for, so it, it matches up with the number of clicks on the sights itself. For the M4, you need to have the M16, or M4 target, rather. All right, we also have um, assortment of different colors of, of permanent markers. We're gonna use these markers to mark our groups on target downrange. Each group will be a different color. For our first group, we'll pick a color, say orange. We'll mark all five shots with the orange marker, and we'll come over here by this number one and color it in orange, so we know that our first group was the orange group. The next group, we're gonna mark with a different color, say blue. We'll mark all five shots with a blue marker, and we'll put a blue line next to the number two here so we know our next group is two, if you, or blue rather. If we do all of our groups that way, we know what each group was, and um, at once we start making movements off those shot groups, we'll write down the number of clicks that we moved next to that shot group. All right, we also have a front sight tool. Um, a front sight tool will allow us to move the front sight post without damaging it at all. All right, if you don't have a front sight tool, make sure that you press down the detent fully and turn the front sight with a bullet or a sharp object in the detent notch itself. Don't grab the tip of the front sight with a pair of pliers and try to twist it that way. That'll just break it. So a front sight tool is very handy for manipulating that front sight post. All right, so now we're gonna have Sergeant Crody get down into a good prone supported firing position. We have a target up at 25 meters down range and we're gonna start our zero process. Okay, now we're out here at the 25 meter range. The range is set up. Our rifle is mechanically zeroed. Now it's time for the shooter to get down in position and build a good prone supported firing position. All right, Sergeant Crody, go ahead and get in position. As you can see, when he's getting into position, the prone supported firing position should look exactly like the unsupported firing position. You should build it the exact same way, with the exception that now you have sandbags just to stabilize that weapon system. What you don't want to do is rely solely on the sandbags to stabilize that weapon. What we see a lot of times when we take shooters out to the range, when they get their 25 meter zero, they'll let the rifle rest directly on the sandbags and try to hold the rifle on the sandbags or grip the magazine well like he's doing now. And this is not the correct way to do it. When you're getting that good zero on the rifle, you want to do it the exact same way you're going to shoot it on the qualification range. As we all know, we shoot part of the qualification unsupported and the other part of it supported and kneeling. So you want to build your supported firing position the exact same way you're going to shoot it when it's unsupported. Again, you can see his non-firing arm is almost directly underneath the rifle. The magazine will rest against the arm. All right, he's holding the front uh, hand guards of the rifle with just a light grip just to keep his hand from slipping. 
His firing hand has a high, firm handshake grip on the pistol grip. His trigger finger falls naturally on the trigger. As you can see, he's got a good chipmunk cheek where he has that good solid stock weld, which is going to anchor his dominant eye directly behind the rear sight aperture, allowing him to get good sight alignment. All right, again, his body position is the exact same way as it was when he was in a prone, unsupported firing position. He's shooting with the bent knee position. His firing side elbow acting as a kickstand. All right, when Sergeant Crody gets down in position, he's going to close his eyes. He's going to let everything relax. He's going to let the way the rifle go down into the sandbags. He's going to open his eyes and check his natural point of aim. If he's not on target, when he checks his natural point of aim, he's going to move his entire position to get realigned. He'll close his eyes and get in position again and open his eyes to make sure he's on target. After he makes those few minor adjustments, his natural point of aim will be dead centered on the target, which is going to ensure that he doesn't muscle the rifle one way or the other to actually get it to the target and induce a muscle, you know, muscular tension, which is going to fatigue. Sorry, Crody, how you feeling? Ah, just need to load up. All right. All right, Sorry, Crody's got a good, solid position. His natural point of aim is on target. Now we're going to have him go ahead and lock and load. Again, on the M16 A4 series rifle with the removable carrying handle, make sure that your elevation wheel is on the Z setting to zero at 25 meters. All right, now, again, he's locked and loaded. He's gonna check his natural point of aim one more time, make sure everything's good to go. Once he's ready to roll, he'll rotate his safety lever from select to semi, or from safe to semi, rather, and he'll shoot a good, solid five-shot group. What I'm watching for when I'm watching the shooter is to make sure that he's being very smooth on the trigger. He's not slapping the trigger. Make sure he's keeping his eye in sight the whole time. Just like that, he hears the metallic click as the trigger reaches. All right. Just like that, nice and smooth. Shooter called that last shot just a little bit on the left, so we should have one shot out to the left. All right, now that Sergeant Crody has shot his first five shot group down range, we're going to ensure that the rifle is clear before we move down range. The weapon is on safe. Both of us will actually inspect the chamber to make sure the chamber is clear. clear. There's nothing in the rifle. The magazine is removed. The rifle is in a completely safe condition. We have our first marker, so now let's walk down range and mark our target. All right, now we've moved down range to the target. We're going to go ahead and mark our first group. We'll take our pink marker. We're going to color the outside of the holes with that first marker so you can tell exactly which shot was which. Make sure you get the entire group uh, marked there with all five shots. So he called one shot a little bit to the left, which is probably our farthest left shot here. And he told me when we were walking down range that he broke one a little bit low. So that's probably that shot there. Other than that, it's a very good group. This is another perfect example of why we shoot a five-shot group versus a three-shot group. All right, as you can see, four shots are all touching, very, very tight shot group with one shot outside of the group. If we would have only shot in three shots there, uh, the group, the center of the group would actually be a lot lower than what it actually is on target here. All right, so now we're not going to make any adjustments. We're going to take the pink marker and put a pink line by the number one so we know that the first shot group was the group marked in pink. Now we're going to move back up range, load up another good five round mag and shoot another shot group on target. All right, now we're back up range. We're going to have Sergeant Cruddy go ahead and lock and load again. All right, first thing I'm going to have him do is get into a good, strong, supported firing position again. We're going to check his position, make sure everything looks the same way it did as the, uh, the five shot group prior to this one. All right, again, his hand's in the same spot. He's got good, solid stock weld on the rifle. His body position in the same spot. He's going to check his natural point of aim by relaxing down on that target opening his eyes and looking through the sights and see where he's pointing. If he's not on target, he'll make his small adjustments to get his natural point of aim on target. Set. You ready to roll? Okay, now we're gonna watch and make sure again that he's staying focused on the sights um, and staying very smooth on the trigger. What I'll have to do is move from side to side because I can only see his trigger and firing hand from this side. I have to move to the other side of him to watch his eye to make sure he's keeping his eye open and staying, looks like he's focused on the sights. So go ahead and break your first shot, Sergeant Crody. smooth trigger control he held the trigger to the rear through the recoil he came back on target and then he released and reset 
So as the coach, I moved around to the other side of the shooter. Now I can see his, his head position on the stock. I can see his, do, his dominant eye. And I'm gonna have him go ahead and shoot the re remainder of his four shots and watch his eye and watch his head on the rifle to make sure he's staying on the rifle and following through with each shot. I'm also gonna ask him to call his shots to me after he fires each shot. Center. Center, okay, good center call. Everything stayed put, his head stayed on the rifle. Everything looks good. A little tall. All right, he called that one just a little bit high. Close to center. Good center shot. A little low and right. Just low center. All right, he called one shot a little bit high and a little one low and right. Just a touch right. All right, so we're gonna have him lock and clear. Pretty sure you just shot like a seven shot group. He inspects the chamber. I inspect the chamber. The rifle's clear, it's on safe. We're gonna grab a different color marker and we're gonna move down range to mark. All right, now we're down range at the target. to mark his second five shot group. As you can see here, we marked them. All five shots, we can tell which of them they are. We mark them with this blue marker. Um, his second five shot group is right on top of his first five shot group, so we can go ahead and make corrections off of this. We know he's, he's clearly got good sight alignment, a good sight picture. He's holding in the same spot between each group, so we're gonna make a sight adjustment off of this. All right, we come down from center. We find our line across the bottom or across the top, and that tells us how far we need to move left or right to correct for a windage. So we come down here, we need to move somewhere between six and nine. So we'll go ahead and call it eight. We'll move eight clicks right. So I come up here right next to the blue line and I write eight right. All right, and that tells us we need to move eight clicks right to get to center of the target. So we can, now we come over to the side of the target. This tells us how many clicks we need to move on the front sight post in order to get our group up to center mass. So we follow it down. It looks like we need to move roughly seven or eight clicks up to get to center. We're gonna go ahead and call it seven. So I come over here, I write a number seven and a little arrow pointing up. That tells us we need to move seven clicks up on the front sight post. If you have any questions, all right, our shot group's down here in this lower quadrant. It tells us that we need to move the rear sight knob to the right, so it's forward on the rear sight to move it to the right. On the front sight post, it tells us that we need to move it clockwise in order to bring our shot group up. So it has directions right here on which way to actually turn the sight to get our group up to where we want it. So we're gonna move eight clicks right and seven clicks up to get our group, our next shot group to center. So let's go ahead and put the correction on the rifle and shoot another five shot. Grab our front sight tool. We know we need to come seven clicks up. So we're gonna turn the front sight post clockwise, seven clicks. He's gonna watch each click, make sure it goes into each detent like it's supposed to. All right, so he moved his front sight post seven clicks up. We know we needed to move eight clicks right to get to the center of the target, so he's gonna turn his windage knob eight clicks clockwise. That's gonna bring our shot group to the right. All right, now we're gonna have him go ahead, load up another five round magazine and shoot five more good shots. Again, I'm watching trigger control to make sure he's not slapping the trigger. I'm watching his head on the stock to make sure he's following through and I'm going to have him call any shots that are outside of center. So if he breaks a shot to the left or to the right or high or low, he needs to tell me that so when we go down range we know why it's outside of the group. Alright, go ahead and lock it low. Some good prone supported firing position. He's going to check his natural point of aim again. I'm going to check make sure everything looks fundamentally okay. Point of aim, go ahead and shoot me five good shots. Anything that's outside of center, go ahead and 